In November 2014, Presidents Barack Obama and Xi Jinping issued the joint announcement on climate change in Beijing. What did the announcement say and why was it significant? So that was the first time the two countries ever decided to cooperate together on climate change. And up until then, you know, some people argued that the two countries were, you know, had a suicide pact, that they were both using the other as an excuse for inaction. The U.S. Congress had said, we won't ratify the Kyoto Protocol because China isn't doing enough and doesn't have the same responsibilities. And the Chinese found it hard to take on responsibilities with the U.S., who was then, at the time, the biggest polluter in the world, not taking action. And so they both were using each other as an excuse for inaction. And as a result of that announcement, the whole world came together a year later and agreed on the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. You just mentioned the Paris Agreement, which brought almost every country together, making a serious, concrete commitment mm -hmm. to addressing climate change. Could you tell us how China and the U.S., starting with China, proposed to approach climate change and what the two countries have done since December 2015? So the Paris Agreement took a very different approach from previous rounds of the international climate negotiations. In the past, countries negotiated the targets with each other, and so there was a lot of pressure. You know, the U.S. would say to China, you should do more. This is, this is what your target should be, or we, the U.S. was telling Europe, you should be doing this. And of course, that didn't work very well. Um, so after the failure of the Copenhagen talks in 2009, uh, there was sort of a collective stepping back and a decision to try to do nationally determined contributions, as they're called, NDCs. And um, that was a very important principle in the U.S.-China negotiations. These would be nationally determined targets. You mean before the 2014 announcement? Before Paris. Announcement? Oh, that was for the, for the 2014 mm -hmm. announcement. <clears throat> um, so as the two countries negotiated that agreement, and I was on the negotiating team for the United States, we often returned to that principle that it was important that these countries be, or that these commitments be nationally determined. And so actually, by the time all the countries arrived in Paris for that final round of negotiation, almost every country already had its target on the table. So the negotiations were not as difficult as they had ever been in the past. Mm -hmm. And how has China been doing? China is right on track. Uh, they actually have faithfully implemented everything that they said they would do. Actually, in the context of the 2014 announcement, um, and, and there was a subsequent joint statement in 2015 where they announced a bunch of domestic policies. For example, they decided to establish a national emissions trading uh, regime for their power sector. Mm -hmm. And they did establish that last year. So they have actually been faithfully implementing the target so far. And now we get to the contrast. Yeah. The Trump administration has clearly had a very different view mm -hmm of the existence and significance of climate change than previous American administrations. What policies have been adopted that demonstrate that different view? Well, all of the policies that the Obama administration put into place were regulatory policies. Um, they were using their authorities under the Clean Air Act primarily and the Energy Security Act. Um, to issue efficiency standards or CO2 performance standards. Um, and the Trump administration has tried to roll back all of those. Um, it's not clear that they actually will be able to ultimately do that. But at this point, a lot of those regulations are tied up in the courts. Mm -hmm. um, so there has certainly been an attempt at undoing um, much of what the Obama administration had done. I'd say one thing that hasn't changed, actually, was that Congress had put in place um, tax incentives for renewable energy, and those remain in place and have been untouched. Uh, so I think that's one reason why we still continue to have pretty fast growth in solar and wind deployment in the United States. Mm -hmm.
You write in your book about the role of the states in the U.S. in moving ahead to address climate change, even when the federal mm -hmm. government is trying to make these rollbacks. Given that in China, such policies are issued at the central level, mm -hmm. how does that mismatch of levels work in practice? China is very conscious of hierarchy mm -hmm. and pays attention to protocol. The central government of China should be dealing with the federal government of the U.S. Has China been willing to work directly with individual states or consortia of states? How does that work? Yes, well, I should have mentioned at the state level in the United States, there's been this big movement called We Are Still In, as in We Are Still In the Paris Agreement. And about 50% of the U.S. population lives in states that have said they will commit to the Paris Agreement goals. So the states are actually really rising to the occasion right now in the United States. Um, and of course, they're very important uh, venues for climate policy making, and constitutionally, they have the right to right. develop and impose uh, their own policies. And in particular, um, California and New England have done a lot. But I, I'd also point out some relatively conservative states like Texas or Colorado, where I'm originally from, have really had very strong support policies for clean energy. Um, now, you're right that on the Chinese side, it's very different. You know, they don't have a constitutional um, separate but equal power structure. It's totally hierarchical. Um, that being said, many of the provinces in China have been encouraged by the central level to go beyond the, you know, official Chinese government target. And a lot of provinces and even cities formed an association of Peking pioneer cities. Uh -huh. um, and the idea was they would try to demonstrate to the rest of the country how they could peak their emissions earlier than 2030, which is the Chinese target. So there's a lot of encouragement um, and support from the central government level for there to be experimentation at the provincial level. And as you know, that's a common feature of how China does policy is experiment at the mm -hmm. you know lower levels and then bring it to the national level. Now to your question about US China cooperation, it has been very interesting to see in the last couple of years um, an attempt by former Governor Jerry Brown to negotiate and partner directly with President Xi Jinping. Mm -hmm. Um, interestingly, when Governor Brown hosted the Global Climate Action Summit last fall, the Chinese government at the central government co-sponsored uh, that conference and sent, you know, a minister um, to be one of the keynote speakers. So there has been actually a kind of rise of the states to, to conduct that foreign policy in the absence of any... <laughs> at the federal level in the United States. So how are we doing, we both countries, the two largest emitters of greenhouse gases, are we making sufficient headway to avoid, if, if not a catastrophe, the very serious <coughs> negative consequences of climate change? Well, yes, we are making, actually, we are making progress, but not fast enough. Um, I wouldn't give up hope yet. I think there's still uh, a good chance that with leadership from the two countries, um, we can actually turn the tide. Um, the U.S. has actually been on a downward trajectory uh, for quite some time. However, last year, there was a 3% jump, which was the biggest jump in a long time, an increase. Yeah. Now, what's um, our target? Our target is 26 to 28 percent mm -hmm. below 2005 levels by 2025. So we were actually kind of on track um, until this three percent, you know, jump upward. Uh, I think that's reflective of the fact that you know all of the policies are being um, tied up in the courts or dismantled. Um, you know, and also probably there's just less national effort 
you know, everybody knows the pressure is off because Trump has announced he'd like to withdraw the United States. China also had a jump last year um, after a plateau of three straight years. Mm -hmm. um, there was no growth for street, three straight years. So many people thought maybe China had peaked well in advance of its target, which was 2030. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of us believe China will peak prior to 2030. I think that was uh, a conservative target, them wanting to be sure that they could peak. Mm -hmm. um, what but, accounts for the increase last year? We don't know yet. It's, it's really early to tell. Um, exactly what happened, um, but it many people think it's probably because the Chinese are trying to stimulate the economy, um, and so there was a return to some of the more traditional sectors um, and as they were trying to rev up the economy again. Well, given the latest economic figures, that may yes. not bode well for this year. Right, right. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but thank you very much for talking with me today. And thanks for having me.